Welcome, welcome, welcome to a special edition of A Man's Point and View. Today is going to be about child support. Uh, and of course, I'm your host, Mike Mike. Uh, Y'all caught me slipping. I was looking at some stuff on Facebook. But I wanted to do a quick show today about um, child support. In particular, I found the story that was based out of Houston, Texas. And it was a guy... Uh, who was proven not to be the father of a particular uh, custody case, but nevertheless, he was still forced to continue to pay child support. So what I did was I posted this particular picture and topic on Facebook, and I had roughly about 51 comments um, weighing in on the subject, and it got pretty interesting. So what I wanted to do was kind of dissect some of the people's answers, share my point of view as well, but also kind of get the dialogue started each week about this child support situation. Because if you watch me every week, you hear I do say this pandemic started late February, early March. So come end of January, February, there's going to be an influx of new births which means there's going to be an influx of new parental and custody issues. And if we're not getting educated now, then that's a possibility there's going to be some major issues later. So I'm trying to get ahead of the game. As always, I want all of us to be educated. Uh, being a father, I do cater a lot of my topic toward the fathers, strictly because there are fewer laws to help the father. But overall, my objective is to get both parents to understand their decision impact their child or their children. So with that, let's kind of jump into this topic today. And the topic today was, what should, what should you do if DNA reveal you are not the father, but the mother has put you on child support? Now, first thing I want to do is say this entire discussion will not, is not, and please do not consider it as a legal advice. This is my point of view, my experience, and my opinion talking to the general public. So with that, if you need legal advice, uh, hopefully uh, one of the attorneys waiting on a conversation will call in and help you with that. If not, then you can inbox me and I can forward you to some qualified attorneys. So. Not legal advice, just us having a great conversation. Plus, you know, I've dealt with two child support issues, so I will not hesitate to share my personal experience. So with that, let's look at the issue. The question I asked was, what should you do if DNA reveal you are not the father and the mother has you on child support? Now, the key thing I want to dissect with this is, it says the mother has you on child support. And it say the mother put you on child support. Now, I'm going to tell you why I said it the way I did. What some people do not realize, if the mother go ask for help, Medicaid, child care, XYZ, the agency normally ask her to name the father. Now, if you have never been through any type of litigation or situation in court that confirm you are the father, then she can say anything she wants to. And at that point, until you prove it differently and you do not go to court to contest it, you're the father by default. If you ever watched the show called Paternity Court on uh, YouTube, then she quite often say, because of default, because you didn't show up to court or you missed a court proceeding, then by default, the court will... Uh, name you as the father. Now, with that, there is a time lapse you have to contest it, but don't always be quick to jump to the conclusion 
that the mother of your child did something malicious. Now, on the flip side to that, there's a ton of females that I have interacted with that have done it very maliciously. I know a case where a lady drove from Texas to Chicago and each new county she drove to, she stopped and filed a new child support case on the guy. Now you may say, how in the world did she do that? We don't have a perfect system. We have to remember child support is a major, major business. So that's the first thing I want you to think about. If you find out, oh wow, that's not my child, don't deny it, curse her out, and then run. Face it head on. The first thing you should do is like, okay, I don't believe it's my child. Let's go get a DNA. You know, but if you're like, eh, not sure, go to the store, go to CVS, go to Walgreens, go to Walmart, get a store purchase one, test it yourself. If it comes back, you're not the father then now you don't mind investing if it comes down to it uh, in the court system to get it proven. But also be mindful, there is a window. And, um, and with that, I wanna find the uh, case that the attorney said so that you don't say I said it. Um, oh, here it is right here. It said, if a man signs an acknowledgement of paternity, better known as an AOP, he can only contest the signing after so many days. Failure to contest and no other man challenged the paternity after four years. The man is deemed the legal father of the child. And with that, it goes on to say, therefore, on, he is on the hook for child support financial payments. So let me break that down in cornbread language. You get someone pregnant. She call you up and say, hey, I'm pregnant. You the baby daddy. Most of us immediately do what? Deny. First thing you should do is like, oh, wow, okay, or whatever you say. Great. Let's get through this. You see how I said that? Then go buy a test. Test the child. Test yourself. You know, it's worth 20, 30 bucks, whatever they cost. If that particular home test revealed you are not the father, now you can be pretty comfortable saying, well, hey, let's go and go to court. Let's get this out of the way because I don't believe I'm the daddy. It's better to prove it early on than to deny, 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 deny. And then you're four years and up. And whether you deny it or not, the court's like, well, it's four years and one day, took you too long. You are the biological father of this child, although DNA says you are not. Now, we can scream, shout, holler, cuss, raise cane, say it's illegal, it's unlawful, anything you want to say. But at the end of the day, that's the law you're looking to be in compliance with. So that's the first leg of this discussion I want you to process. Uh, I need to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, we're going to jump in some of the other responses we got from yesterday. You're watching a man's point of view from a child support perspective. We'll be right back. Never hit the game winning shot. But I'll always be there when it counts. Welcome back, y'all caught me again. Ha ha. But anyway, uh moving on to the next point. So just to rehash. This is not legal advice. If you, you know, here's something that basically applies to you. 
Uh, it's good to hear it because a lot of the information I'm giving you, I'm reading from what an attorney posted yesterday. I'm also sharing with you my personal life experiences, but also be mindful. Uh, and you're welcome to call me and ask questions. If you have a question now, you can call uh, 214-454-0929, and I'll do my very best to help answer some of your questions. But be mindful. The first leg I said was, if you find out that the person you've been with during this whole covent come back and say, hey, I'm pregnant, do not just deny and do nothing. As I read earlier, according to the attorney's statement, it said, if you are named the father and you do nothing for a set period of time, you can be deemed the father of their child and on the hook for financial risk support. Now, with that being said, let me scroll through here and look at a couple of other comments. Um, the attorney made another great point um, that I really, really like. Let me see, can I find it again? Oh, actually, it was one of the people. Uh, she asked a question about what if the father were to get a test and it's proved that he's not the father. Can he sue the mother for what she's calling uh, paternity fraud damages? And with that, I'm hoping Miss Brown hear me talking about her posting and call in. And with that, uh, there's a couple of uh, variables we wanna look at. Let's say the mother goes to the, the uh, government office to get help. And as I said previously, she says, uh, hey, you know, I need Medicaid. My child needs to go to the doctor. They say, okay, who's the baby daddy? Oh, the baby daddy is so-and-so. Now, she did not put you on child support maliciously. She merely said your name to get the process started for medical assistance for that child. Now, once you get an acknowledgement that, hey, you've been served to go to court to be acknowledged to be the father of that child, due to that situation, then I don't think it's fraud. I don't think it is. I mean, I would not be upset. I would merely pursue forward and getting confirmation that it is or is not my child. So that way, if I have a job with insurance, I'd be like, no, 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 no. Take my child off of that insurance and put them on mine. I don't want them people in my life. So in that situation, I would likely to say the probability of suing for paternity fraud slim to none. But now, let's reverse that scenario. Let's say you have someone who's bitterly upset at you and basically goes out and intentionally not only put you on child support, but create a fabricated story that causes you to be on not only child support, but they hit you with back child support arrears all the way back to the birth of the child. And the mother or whoever done it, done it too evenly to get at you, to hurt you. Now, in that situation, I would feel that you may want to look at the paternity fraud because it wasn't that she went and done it to get government help. It wasn't that she done it to do anything beneficial of the child. She done it to get even with you. But even with that, you got to process it. Consider what do they call fraud? You know, basically, that's you lying about a situation for a profit or a gain, if I'm thinking, if I remember the definition right, which means a paternity fraud, which means someone lied about a situation, paternity, for some type of benefit or gain, and you was named as part of the person in that particular fraud. And with that, I would definitely say you may want to look as that if that's a legitimate option for you to consider because this person then put you on child support to help the child. She put you on child support to get even with you. And that, in my opinion, could be considered some type of fraud, something she did out of maliciousness or illegal. Another thing a, a guy asked was um, uh, Mr. Gibbert. He said, if he is in fact not the paternal father, and if he is found that the mother lied, that man can sue for paternity fraud damages 
in Texas and some other states, and they called that the Baxter Law. I'm not sure what that is. I did research it, and I found, excuse me, <coughs> I found the case, and if you could pop up the name of that case, I think it was called Zapita versus Zapita. Zapita. Z E P E something. Did you pop it up? Pay. Zapata versus. Now, I would definitely say if you're in that situation, go to the Google or whatever, find that case, open up your Coke and a smile, and read it. Because. That was one of the milestone cases, and it had several variations in it as I was looking over it. It's called the uh, the Baster Law, B-A-S-T-A-R-D-L-A-W. And with that, you got to think about, and this is just me. Again, this is not legal advice. I'm just going to tell you the micro side of it, the man's point of view. That's me. If someone put me in trouble and I'm on the hook, plus interest with child support for five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And they merely did that because they got an attitude because I no longer want to be with them. Then you can bet your last dollar. If there's a law out there I can get even with them back, I would. That's no different than someone stealing your ideal, like in the movies industry, they call it intellectual properties. That's no different than someone breaking into your car. That's no different than someone breaking into your home. They violated your peace. And for that reason, why not share with them? They broke the law. They lied. They put you in a situation that caused you major, major discomfort and financial harm. So perhaps that may be something you want to look at. But that was one of the things that was brought up yesterday. And, uh, it really caught me off guard because I'm like, huh, that's something we should think about because every day mothers and fathers have their disputes. But I was always say, told to fight fair when it comes to your children. And I'm going to repeat that. Fight fair when it comes to your children. Uh, my personal experience, um, I have a mother of one of my children that I don't particularly think co-parent very well, which means as little time as I can be around her is the best. However, when it comes down to our child, I do my very best not to say or do anything to make our child see us differently other than being parents. Now, I can't say she have done that completely herself, but for me, I would rather look in the mirror and say, okay, I did my part. As my child grows older, she would see dad never did this or that. However, if by chance she did do something to bring imminent harm to me, it's no different than how you would discipline your child or call the cops on someone who violated you. You would call the cops and get them penalized, get them in trouble or however you want to call it. I think if we as non-custodial parents, those that who do not have the custody, primary custody of the children, were to report more of those negative behaviors, I think the number of illegal cases will begin to go this way. So that's the second part of the conversation. Again, I got to take another quick commercial break. When I come back, I'm going to wrap some things up and basically give you some foundation to build on. You're watching A Man's Point and View, the Child Support Edition. We'll be right back. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics. Legacy Orthopedics, Legacy orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Here at Legacy Orthopedics, all of our care is centered around you. We're here for your joint pain and athletic injuries. 
Experience, training, and patient relationships are at the foundation of legacy orthopedics and sports medicine. Uh, we pride ourselves on the patient experience. Uh, we treat every single patient as if they were our family. Welcome back, welcome back. A man's point in view, a child support edition. I am your host, Mike Mike. And I thought this was a very good subject for us to talk about. And we're going to conclude it with an, another organization that I think everyone should pay attention to. And if you could pop it up on the screen, it's called the Fatherhood Resolution Center. It's one of those deals where I feel quite often if we as parents were to engage in an intelligent conversation, or if we as father were to create a situation to engage in an, an intelligent conversation, it would probably keep us out of a situation more times than not. Now granted, I'm the first one to say that it's excessively difficult. You got someone who's, as y'all would say, straight up tripping and acting a darn fool. Now all of a sudden, you got to do something positive for them versus retaliating. Hey, it's the difference between being in trouble for 18 years with a child you, you don't like the mother of. I'm just saying. But I'm looking at a couple more of the comments here. And a couple things things people ask about uh, uh, a man should be reimbursed. Uh, of course, they said a man should be sued. Uh, a couple of other ones said, um, talked about the bastard law. Um, I think the mother should be jailed. Uh, what's another? The they feel that if it comes back, the mother should pay for the DNA test. I like that one. I like the jailed also. Uh, also, it talks about, uh, what is this one? Uh, said if a man can contest it through genetic testing. Uh, positive. Oh, here's a new one. Uh, another one by Miss Brown. It said there's a new Texas law. It says, but Texas... The new Texas law say a man can contest through a genetic test, DNA paternity, and if found not to be the biological father, that man has one year to bring the suit to court to, to de-establish, and if necessary, he can also sue her for paternity fraud, damages, and emotional distress. Very interesting. So there is a new law, according to this person, that basically says after the four years, if you can say by generic testing, DNA test, presented to the courts that you had no knowledge of it and it was done maliciously, then some cases the court will give you one year to prove your case. Now that is very good that is very good and you know i know i'm talking fast it's only a 30 minute show um got one other here this one said and also if you reverse the suit the mother can be sued for defamation of character get your money back and a good enough argument to show that both cases could be criminal so the flip side to this situation is most of the people that are talking here uh are basically you know, they're looking at the situation as legal business. But what I wanted to do is circle back to the conversation I said earlier about the um, Fatherhood Resolution Center. What I like most about that program, and I'm going to read it here, um, it looks for permanent solutions that put the child's interest first and remove the child out of imminent harm due to family conflict. Now, what does that mean? In other words, they try to find a solution between the arguing parents that's best for the child that at some point could escalate to the child getting emotionally, physically, or psychologically harmed. Fatherhood Resolution Center. Uh, so with that, I think that's something you guys definitely want to look at. If you want more details, Please, please, please hit me up, 214-454-0929. Um, 
Uh, it's the number for the TV show, but you can always leave a message and I can follow up. Or you can inbox me here on Facebook. Also, uh, it says the Fatherhood uh, Resolution, FRC, believe that education, which is father learning and involvement program, uh, and communication, family mediation, uh, is paramount in protecting our children, health, co-parenting, and requesting help for final decision in family court. How often do you as a parent, and I'm going to say a father because, again, I lean toward the father that has less laws. You know you're trying to do what's right, but you have no clue of how to get started, but you don't have the money to retain an attorney. The Fatherhood Resolution Center sounds like to be an ideal place for you to at least reach out to because at least they can point you in the direction and or help you find perhaps affordable attorneys or get them one of the programs, what is it, Father's Learning and Improvement Program, to perhaps help you know how to self-rep. I strongly, strongly encourage you guys to look them up. Father Resolution Center. Perhaps that's a new source versus the combativeness of child support because you and I both know if you go to this general attorney general court, they have one agenda, money. If you're going to go to district court, you either need to retain an attorney or you have to follow the protocol of a normal attorney. And if you don't know how to do that, then again, you lose your case. But even before you get to that, you got you to know how to properly file a request to bring a case to be in front of the judge. So there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to that. Fatherhood Resolution Center could be your answer. And I keep saying that because I'm telling you, <clears throat> we've been in this COVID thing, what? February, March, and I'm telling you, I've been sitting back saying it because whether you like it or not, let's just keep it one million. You've been stuck indoors. You have a girlfriend, if you live with her, if not, you wouldn't saw her. And you can't tell me you ain't several times in the past six, eight months. And let's just say you started in February. If that's the case, come what? October? November? December? You got a little shouty coming out of there, a junior or something. And with that, let's think about that. At first, it's okay. But once the problems start happening, then what? Let's say from that day, from, uh, what is that, October, and you can pretty much count six months there out, all the way to just about June of 2021, there are going to be an influx of newborn children. It was a pandemic. You got bored. You had a lot of intimacy with the person you care about. That's natural, but also there are consequences. And if you do find yourself in a situation to where you birthed a new child, do not avoid it. Face it head on, deal with the issue, and don't get caught like this guy, basically in a paternity suit that you let lapse that end up costing you more. All right, guys, that's my time for the day. Any questions, feel free to inbox me. Uh, I enjoy speaking with you, and uh, you've been watching A Man's Point of View, Child Support Edition. We'll see you next time.